rise for the pledge. We're going to start the meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Present. Here. 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 We just got one uh, move on this agenda. I gave him my thing. Was it four and discussion and 14 and consent, Becky? Mm -hmm. Right. To discussion remove those two? 14, consent, four. I'll make a motion to amend the, uh, the agenda to uh, make those changes. Can I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next up is the acceptance of uh, minutes, the town board regular meeting, February 7th. Presented as a motion, can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, introduction of new employees. Do we have any new employees here today? We almost did. Almost did? Yeah, he <laughs> left, okay. Uh, next up is a, a, a public hearing to amend the town code, chapter 143, vehicle and traffic, to add new 143-17A entitled no U-turns and, and a new schedule D, Enti and entitled no u-turns so i'll make a motion to open up the public hearing can i have a second second all in favor aye. aye okay so right now there's a public hearing where anybody can speak about the town uh being authorized to put u-turn signs in the town of fish Grill. anybody want to speak about it where are you putting them there's a person on Manchia party just north of the beacon newberg bridge and uh the state put a uh, one of those uh don't block the road signs on both sides with the with the ground and then the people there complain about people making U-turns, and we have to have a public hearing to make the law so we can put the signs up. So that's what this is about. They're take a, taking a shortcut, try to get over yeah. the bridge, and they're disrupting residents. So. Yeah. So no one wants to talk? Everybody okay with that? All right. So I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's no presentations. Next up now is the privilege of the floor for general town items. So now you'll be able to speak about anything relating to the town of Fishkill. Anybody just get up? Bridget, you first. Let her go first. Really don't like doing this. Uh, Bridget Anderson, 29 Pritchard Court, Fishco. Uh, as many of you know, I've been following the Healy dealership project since it was brought to the town planning board for approval. There have been many issues with this project, as we all know. The town's failure to enforce to uh, ensure the projects were constructed per the zoning and building codes and approved plans. <coughs> when the temporary turning lane was, plant was painted on Route 52 for the Healy project, it raised some <coughs> concerns as to what was being planned since nothing was shown on the approved plans, or at least that I could find. I reached out to the building department to find out what was being done, and as expected, got no response. On January 2nd, I sent the. Uh, sure. Uh, Sorry. Speak, speak into the mic. Uh, where was I? Um, I reached out to the building department to find out what was being done and as expected got no response. On January 2nd, I sent the town of Fishkill a FOIL request for all drawings and documentation on this turning lane and received only the planning board resolution for an amended site plan approval. The zoning department claimed that they had no drawings for this and I was told by Joel Petrus that it was being handled by New York State Department of Transportation for a highway permit. I then sent New York State DOT a FOIL request and received not only a complete set of design drawings dated September 22nd, please remember that date, but a copy of the highway permit Healy had submitted dated April 26th of 2023 and for requesting approval to do the turning lane. It was approved on 10-12-23, another important date. Coincidentally, the Town of Fishkill Planning Board approved this project at their 10-12 23 meeting without having received the drawings that were submitted to DOT by Healy. It's clear by the dates of these documents, the drawings were available to be provided to the planning board for review and public comment prior to their October meeting. This is the first time the chairman of the planning board saw the drawings was when I sent them, <coughs> sent them what I was received from DOT. <coughs> this work was planned, this work as planned will allow Healy to remove and locate our existing sidewalk along Route 52, we require them to cut down street trees to do so, and relocate irrigation lines. None of that is shown on those drawings. 
It will also impact our entrance as long as the entrance to Fox Ridge requiring their relocation in their flagpole planting areas and probably their sign. This work is being done on property belonging to the communities and also the town of Fishkill when you go further down by the rec center. This cannot be allowed without prior review by the planning board and public comment by the community in allowing the New York State right of way requirements for, for pro uh, following those requirements for taking away you know, private property. If I had not raised the temporary turning lane mark out because I almost got hit by a car running because they took the shoulder away um, and foiled the documents, we would have never known about what was going to happen until they started doing the work. In fact, they had actually ripped out a section of our sidewalk and we had no idea they were doing it. The town of Fishkill has in their code the complete streets program requiring when projects such as this are considered by the planning board, the sidewalks and bikeways be included as part of the project. The extent of the work done for the PLA project would have, in my opinion, required the planning board to have the developer include them as part of their approval project for the project, including walks along the town property, an area that is specifically called out in the town's comprehensive plan. I confirmed with uh, county planning <laughs> that that would have been the case. Uh, we have many walkers and runners in our community. Imagine the difference it would have made to have a much safer way to do just that. The project as it stands today does not meet the requirements set forth by the planning board at their October meeting. Yet clearly, Healy, the Healy dealership has been given their building, given by our building department, a certificate of occupancy to open the dealership. How does that happen? Since receiving this information, I have called and sent email requests requesting meet, meetings with the town to discuss the issue. The only response that I received from the town supervisor was that the project would commence when the blacktop plants opens in the spring. Clearly that was not the question uh, that I asked. I wanted to be able to discuss this because it's to the town's benefit also to have sidewalks in front of their property. I'm asking that the town reach out to New York State DOT to have the permit reevaluated and sent back to the planning board for proper review, neighbor notification and public comment. Thank you. Anybody else here for this issue? <laughs> well, does anybody have something different to say about this issue? Mr. Cantor, I know we got to get him up there. <coughs> yeah. okay. um, Steve Chaccio, uh, 16 Spruce Ridge Drive. Uh, I've been on the board for Fox Ridge for the last 17 years. And I'm also a former government teacher at the John Jay High School. So one of the things that um, kind of upset me about this is that I heard about this today. No advance notice, and nobody in my complex had heard about that. None of the officers, our, our management company, nobody. And one of the things that I, I just want to throw out there is um, uh, if this would go through, and we have a beautiful setup in the front of our complex. Uh, I think most of you are aware of it with our signs, our gardens, our flagpole, our lights. And according to the uh, diagram that Bridget was so nice to share with us, kaboom, gone. And uh, I'm wondering, uh, are they going to replace it? That's one question. Number two, this is quite a busy complex here between town hall, the police station, rec, uh, senior rec center. It's going to be total chaos if they start doing this, and it's going to just totally screw up traffic. I mean, it, it would just be amazing. And thirdly, uh, I travel in and out of here a lot, and our entranceway is right near one of the Healy Brothers' entrance and exits. I have no problem getting in and out with just the one lane. Uh, over here between Glenham and the 84 Diner, which is extremely busy, they have one turning lane. Why does Healy need to? Uh, and I totally agree. She was much better spoken than I am uh, with Bridget on this, that um, I think we're really upset that uh, nobody informed us of this, and there wasn't any kind of meeting or anything on that. So I just want to let you know that Fox Ridge totally backs what she's saying, too. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ryan McCluskey. I reside at 18 William Street, town of Fishkill. Um, I actually wasn't planning a crowd this big tonight. It's kind of nice. My public comment, and as a different subject matter, but it still does all affect everyone here. 
First off, I am speaking as a resident. I am not speaking as a member of any organization that I may be a part of. These are my beliefs and my opinions alone and not part of any organization that I belong to. Um, as we have come to be aware of, many residents in the town of Fishkill, including town board members, do not understand the situation that emergency services are in, in our town, in our county, in our state, and nationally. Um, the town of Fishkill is covered by four volunteer fire departments, fully staffed volunteer fire departments. We are hurting tremendously for membership. A little over a year ago, members of the town board approached the fire departments to have some roundtable discussions. I believe they were very overwhelmed with what we had to say and what we were looking to do, but we did give a very small task list of items that we would like to see accomplished. One of the first things I did when I came tonight was to check to make sure I was speaking fact. And uh, a small item about a simple fire district map that was asked to be put up in the town hall has not been completed well over a year now. We had our discussions, board members were very active in wanting to attend our ceremonial dinners, our events, everything they could put on for Facebook, any type of social media output. Alexis season came, haven't heard from you since. Dropped off the face of the earth, we no longer exist. To the residents of Town of Fishkill, there are four volunteer departments, not just one. You have Rombout, Chelsea, Duchess Junction, and Slavery Chemical. All of us have different ages of acceptance. Um, most of them are 16 years old. College credits are available through these trainings that we provide. No cost to you or the participant. There are positions for everyone, whether it's fire police assisting with traffic at an auto accident or an emergency scene, keeping the scene secure, interior firefighters, exterior firefighters, and drivers. No skill sets required. Everyone can become a part of this organization and help keep the volunteer fire service alive and well. Without the volunteer fire service, we're gonna have to look for other alternatives as fire is an essential service where EMS is not, which is another problem we have in our county and our town. With that, I'll uh, end my discussions and just want to make it publicly known that we are here waiting. Phone numbers haven't changed, the emails are the same. And if you would like to pick up where we left off, I'd be greatly appreciative of that. And I'm sorry to hijack your public comment section. Thank you all. Sir. 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 Uh, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, I want to let you know that uh, there is a meeting being scheduled Saturday, April the 6th. We are inviting Senator Rolleston and Assemblyman Bifan to that meeting. I are believe we getting it's going to be representatives or are we getting their assistance again? They better come well, themselves. They have both confirmed that they're going to be there. And I, and I believe it's going to be at Glenham Fire District. Right. You, know, you know as well as I do, John, we are all very busy, personal lives, multiple jobs take time out of our weekends away from our families and get shafted at the end because the speaker doesn't show, there's another kick in the face to all the people that volunteer for this town. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Cantor, Chairman Cantor. Good evening, Supervisor, members of the town board. I'm Jonathan Cantor and I'm speaking as chair of the town of Fishkill planning board tonight. This is back to the Route 52 highway improvement plans that Ms. Anderson was talking about. So really what I wanted to do is highlight the opportunity for the town to work cooperatively with the State Department of Transportation um, to add a sidewalk. Yeah, you gotta speak up, Jonathan. To add a sidewalk um, in this area of Route 52. Um, I do want to thank Bridget Anderson um, of the Fiscal Woods Homeowners Association for forwarding those highway improvement plans because otherwise I don't think any of us would have seen them as, as she already mentioned. Um, during review of the Healy proposal, the planning board saw only a concept plan for the turning lane uh, that was part of the trans, uh, transportation impact study that the applicant pr provided to the board. During the project review and discussions, the addition of a sidewalk along Route 52 was discussed several times. This is all documented in our videos and minutes of the meetings. The original site plan approval for Healy was approved by the planning board May 12, 2022, prior to the adoption of the town's comprehensive plan update. 
And in the town's comprehensive plan update, there was very high priority placed, um, as many of you know. In fact, I think all of you were working in one way or the other on the comprehensive plan update, um, and I was on that committee as well. Um, prioritizing the importance of sidewalks and the number of corridors in the town, and in particular, very high priority in, in the Route 52 corridor um, near the town hall area right here. And this built upon the town's complete streets policy that's been in the town's code for a number of years. So in the planning board's review of an, of an amended site plan for Healy, a condition was added in the actual resolution of approval dated October 12th, 2023, indicating that a highway work permit from New York State DOT may be required for installation of a sidewalk along Route 52 if DOT determined that a sidewalk would be appropriate at this location. And as Bridget mentioned, the town was never given an opportunity by New York State DOT or Healy to see or review those detailed highway improvement plans. Um, although that was primarily for the turning lane, um, we were hoping that that plan would include new sidewalks, but apparently they don't. So I spoke with Supervisor Albra um, about this, and we agreed that this presents a real opportunity for the town to benefit public safety in this area with the addition of a sidewalk as part of this highway improvement project. And I've heard from Ms. Anderson, and I think as she's indicated tonight, that the residents of Fishkill Woods and Fox Ridge condos are firstly concerned about possible impacts of the highway improvement project on their properties and, at, and elements such as landscaping and entrance uh, enhancements at their properties, but are also, too, supportive of, of the addition of sidewalks on this uh, area of Route 52 to enhance pedestrian safety. So I'd like to ask the town board to support the installation of a sidewalk as part of the highway project and that the board authorized the supervisor to contact State DOT and Healy to first request that the residents of Fishkill Woods and Fox Ridge have an opportunity to provide input on the impacts of this project on their properties, and secondly, to coordinate with DOT and Healy to see if a sidewalk can be added to the Route 52 highway project. I understand there isn't a whole lot of time um, to work on this, but I think it could be a real win-win situation for the town and its residents. So I thank you very much for listening. So Jonathan, uh, just, yep. just the gist of this, DOT did not notify the planning board of the plans? Correct. Okay, were they required to notify the planning board? Is there a requirement that they're supposed to notify the planning board? One would think so, if one were a reasonable <laughs> person, yeah. Um, I mean, something as important as that that doesn't impact residents such as it does and that could impact safety in the town um, and that we did include the statement about the possibility of adding sidewalks in our resolution of approval, you would think that DOT or, and or Healy would have notified us about the availability of those plans. So, so when the planning board submitted their documentation that was used for the DOT stuff, it said that you guys requested a sidewalk being built? It indicate the possibility of a sidewalk being built. And again, as I mentioned, there were several discussions at planning board meetings about the desirability of a sidewalk there. It was never a condition of approval initially by the planning board because again, that is under the authority and auspices of the state DOT. So but only it, DOT could require them to put a sidewalk there? DOT could certainly require them to do that. And especially if they knew and should have known about the town's comprehensive plan our complete streets policy, and the state itself has a complete streets policy on the state level that they're supposed to be following. Okay. They, and the state, the state already added sidewalks at that intersection, the uh, interchange at 84, because I know there were some safety issues there. Um, so they know this corridor is a, is a critical area. So is there a way to uh, ask the DOT to revisit this? Sure. DOT has jurisdiction over the construction of Route 52 and its right of way along Route 52. And if they're approving the construction work for the turning lanes that um, Healy Brothers is doing, they can require sidewalks if they want. But they, you know, 
what they can't do is require sidewalks to be built on private property. Now they could as a replacement, but I don't think that's that's necessarily the well, case. The, the, here. the idea is there's this Fox Ridge and Fishkill Woods communities. There's like a semi sidewalk that connects them, and then it ends at Fox Ridge, and then it becomes a town rec center. And after the town rec center, there's no sidewalks. You guys were thinking about getting sidewalks up to the front of town hall. Is that kind of what you guys were thinking? Correct. Yeah. So what's the position on that? I think you can ask DOT in order to require it, but you, know, you just DOT. said private property, not DOT has the authority to determine the construction of roadways and anything within its right of way. If you're a property owner like Healy Brothers and you come in and say, I want to put in turning lanes, I need them for my development, DOT can, as a condition of approving that, say, all right, but you're going to relocate the sidewalk from where it is now within our right of way onto your private property because we don't want it in our, for whatever reason, don't want it in our right of way anymore. But that's the only basis they would have to require improvements on private property. And just to add, and they could it, require it on other private properties. Doesn't have to be the doesn't have to be Healy Brothers. Could be anybody's. Right. Of course, you have to go and get easements in order to do the work if you're going to do it on someone else's property. It so happens by looking at these highway improvement plans that it appears that there is adequate room within the state highway right of way, especially along the stretch from town hall through the town hall, um, police station, and town rec center. And then you know there. There already is the existing sidewalk up at Fishgill Woods that was done as part of their development. So there's only that small intervening area at Foxwood um, or whatever, the Fox uh, condos that doesn't have any sidewalks that could be added there too. So, so this area doesn't have, I understand <coughs> what they're saying, but, do, but this way, don't come this way from Fox Ridge, there's no sidewalks. You can require installation of new sidewalks. Or yeah. DOT can. Okay, so John. I was going to ask if uh, what's the possibility of trying to get DOT down here for a public hearing? Well, you're not going to get a public hearing. That, I'd be shocked if that happened. What what you probably would I mean, this is time sensitive because I'm you know, can we get it to stop <laughs> for I, halt? Well, maybe it depends on what DOT's response is to this. What I'd suggest you do is add as an item for special consideration an oral motion to authorize the supervisor to send a letter to DOT raising these issues regarding the sidewalks and we can confer with Bridget or, or John in order to come up with a more detailed list of what the asks are in regard to this. I'll assist the supervisor in writing it if he wishes and we'll send that out to DOT right away. See if we can get in a meeting with the, there's a, a head engineer um, uh, at DOT, uh, a head employee who oversees these projects, it's a point man. Okay. I'm sure we can figure out who that is. Mm -hmm. And then we'll reach out to them, see if we can set up a meeting and see where we can go from there. Do, do but we have, you're not gonna be able to reopen this and get a public hearing or something like that. It's just not how the state works. Do we have any idea what, kind, what, what start date they're talking about? I don't know specifically, <laughs> but I would think it would be pretty early then in the spring when the asphalt plants start pumping out asphalt. That's, that's you know, what I heard. If they're already ripping out sidewalks, I'm sure they have plans to proceed. I mean, I've heard from Bridget educated me on this topic and you and I had a conversation about it and, you know, I mean, it just, it, it, I guess we all been wondering what's going on until, thank God, Bridget figured it out and plugged us all in to uh, the thing, but it just, it's disrupting a lot of people, raising a lot of concerns, so. You do realize yeah. that's your job, not our, not Bridget's job. Your job and the planning board. They didn't tell anybody. Yeah, excuse me, sir. If you want to talk, would you come up here and get in line? Yeah. Um, if you don't mind. Certainly not. And by the way, that that's a state project, so we, you know, we're trying we're to figure. To we're trying. To, you would think we would, but obviously we we don't, right. and neither right. does the planning John, board. Let them speak. <coughs> hang out to, can you hang out to the end of the meeting uh, Mr. Cantor so we can talk about the resolution that we're going to fill out I unfortunately can't stay too much longer tonight but I can certainly we could you know communicate with each other can you draft uh, something up for me get it to me like by Friday is that too late Mr. Uh, Cabo no Friday would be fine yeah why don't uh, why don't I give you a call sometime tomorrow when we can talk a little bit more about it at some point or just let me know when okay. a good time I'll call us. I'll call you okay 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 thank you mr. Cantor thanks Sharon 
Sharon Forbes, 36 Spruce Ridge Drive. This may be a silly thought, but if it's Healy's development, why would it? I understand the thought process of putting the sidewalk on whatever side of the road that is in front of Fox Ridge and the firehouse, at the firehouse, the town hall. But why, if it's Healy's project, why wouldn't the sidewalk be in front of their property, on their property? That to me would make the most sense and I would think that that would also make the most sense to the planning board because, and I agree, with, we need sidewalks, especially on 52. And the DOT, as we all know, has already started a sidewalk on that side, down by 84 because of what happened years ago. So it's not out of the question, or it's not totally off balance, even though there's that little piece of sidewalk in front of um, Fishkill Woods. I, I, to me, the simplest thing, Healy built the building, the planning board in, has the laws or the rules now that says we want sidewalks, I agree with that, have them put the sidewalk in on their side of the road. To me, that just makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Louise Danielli, legal resident of 30 years of Fishco. Uh, I have a couple of items I would like to address. I would like to please ask before I start that no one speak over me as I am speaking and let me finish. My comments are not, to, are not meant to incite a shouting match of disagreement, but to again point out factual information the residents are entitled to know regarding their elected officials being transparent and what should be disclosed before they vote on matters that, may have a, that they may have a conflict of interest with. On the agenda are two items regarding easements for Continental Commons. I would point out again, as I have in the past, Councilmember Foreman has a continued connection to, Council, to Continental Commons and Mr. Broccoli. I continue to believe he should abstain from any votes regarding Continental Commons or Mr. Broccoli. I have, I have found it interesting that at the end of the last meeting, Councilmember Foreman asked the supervisor if he had any, quote, easement documents waiting to be signed for Continental Commons. Why would he presume the supervisor had some and wasn't putting them forth? Is he the voice for Mr. Broccoli or a spokesperson for Continental Commons? The Continental Commons attorney could have reached out to the supervisor or our town attorney or the planning board attorney if something needed to be brought up before the board. This leads to my, again, factual information that I have brought up in the past about Councilmember Foreman failing to be transparent and disclose that his longstanding business partner who is involved in Sylvan Lake family property is Mr. Broccoli's cousin, who I believe also owns the property while Councilmember Foreman may have some type of business office in East Fishkill. And that same business partner previously asked Mr. Broccoli to donate money to Mr. Foreman's political campaign. The time frame or the amount doesn't matter. What matters is that he never disclosed it before he voted. This relationship and the fact that money was exchanged could raise ethical questions or give the appearance of one, or give the appearance of one, and for, some, he sh for that reason, he should abstain from voting on any matters regarding Continental Commons or Mr. Broccoli. I am sure that when I am done talking, he will once again ask Mr. Gaba if there is a conflict when what he should be doing is being transparent and actually disclosing those relationships no matter what and doing the right thing by abstaining. If he doesn't do that, it shows, in my opinion, a sense of entitlement that he may believe he doesn't have to inform the public of any perceived potential conflicts he may have with developers when their projects come before, for, before him for a vote. This leads me to the two items on the agenda regarding Continental Commons that are in consent agenda. I believe they should be separate resolutions, not in consent, so the board members can address any potential conflicts before voting or not voting. In addition to that, I have found errors in the agenda packet regarding both requests for easements, and I believe after I explain them that the board, when they reach that discussion, should table the discussions and resolutions, correct the flawed information, and bring it back up at a future meeting so they do not approve a legal document that is not complete. I have handouts that that you can follow along with or read when you uh, get up to this discussion item. 
I'd appreciate if these actually don't end up in the garbage pail as in the past. First discussion, number seven, ID number 9242, and later resolution number six, is regarding approving stormwater facility easement and maintenance agreement for Continental Commons. I didn't understand why the two easements were on the agenda, because as I have learned, it is custom and practice of the planning board to accept submissions from the applicant for signing, for signing of final site plans as one complete submission for review by all town consultants to alleviate confusion. <coughs> as what it appears has happened here. Requesting these easements before the conditions, before all of the other conditions are completed, seems to be putting the cart before the horse. In discussion seven on page 46 of the agenda packet, the date of 2023 should be changed to 2024. It, al it also references in the date, in the second whereas, the preliminary project plans which were approved on December 12, 2019. This document should be updated to reflect the conditional final site plan, which was approved December 18, 2023, which has changes in it from the preliminary one. On page 50 of the agenda packet, there is a memo from Mr. Gaba, which states he reviewed the resolution of preliminary site plan approval from 12-12-2019 regarding the matter and referenced the page and paragraphs regarding the stormwater easement. He failed to recite and reference the resolution of conditional final site plan, which was signed on December 18th, 2023, and has changed from the preliminary one. The conditional finalized site plan should be referenced, not the preliminary one. The other discussion, number eight, with Hold resolution. On. Hold on. So you have four separate. Yeah, topics. so in your packet, you can see what I just was talking about was discussion seven. All right, so let's, let's are you done with seven? Yeah, can I just say it all? No, because I, no, I want to do this piece, man, Mr. Gavel. Well, why, can, can we I just, bend this and get it right? Can I can I say the whole thing? I'm going to forget if you go through four things. I'll make sure we get them all at one all right. time. The, the way that this works is you approve the agreement, and then they have to submit it in final form for your signature. If there's an issue with the dates, they can be revised there. It doesn't change the substance of it. Can we change? Can we can we amend the uh, amend this before we vote on it? You can accept it with required amendments. You can't amend the document. It's submitted by the applicant. You can say we'll accept it subject to the following amendments one two then they have to go and amend it and submit it back okay. okay so like these dates and things like that can we yeah <coughs> sure okay can i finish? that's your first one okay okay the other discussion number eight the resolution number seven is regarding the resolution approving continental commons tree and brush clearing easement on page 52 of the agenda packet the easement date has a blank day of January 23 that should be corrected to 24 in the current month. On the same page, the third whereas last line talks about site plan drawings last revised on and it says, quote, insert date. That should have the actual date the drawings were revised since it is official document which will be filed with the county clerk. Just below the next whereas references an attached schedule A of tree clearing area. You can see on page 56 it says schedule A and says Survey description of tree easements one, two, three over lots one R and two R, but fails to attach those survey surveys in Schedule A. As an official document, they should have the surveys attached to show the locations. On page 57 of the agenda packet, there is a memo from Mr. Gaba. It is a copy of the same memo regarding stormwater facilities agreement. Uh, instead of Continental Commons tree and brush clearing easement, it's just it was a copy of the stormwater one, not regarding the trees. Um, if Mr. Gaba referenced the same preliminary approval from 12-12-19 regarding the tree and brush easement, shouldn't he have referred to the finalized resolution from December 14, 23, as changes were made from the preliminary approvement, approval? Uh, any such document attached should reference the trees, not the stormwater again. 
Resolution six and resolution seven, which I copied and highlighted, have the same errors noted in the discussions regarding the date errors, not referencing the finalized site plan, but instead referencing the preliminary <coughs> one, which has changed, no drawing dates, and no attachments for Schedule A. Uh, I'm not opposed to these agreements coming before the board at the, appro at the appropriate time, but they should be tabled and noted, and the mistakes and missing attachments should be corrected, attached, and resubmitted to the board at a future meeting, so that the board does not approve any resolution or document, which could become a legal issue in the future if they are not updated or complete. Lastly, I do not believe the board should hire the services of the architect listed in resolution 9233. It would be, in my opinion, a fiscally irresponsible thing to do. If you decide to move forward with hiring that person, I would request that you cross out the words, quote, and other agents from the agreement on page 164, third line of the agenda packet, which is the resolution for that, and note that only, only the town board can approve his work, um, appro can approve the work he does and have a contractual limit to what the town will spend. That's it. Good? Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Is it a big deal to uh, redo this paperwork for the next meeting? Is there no. a time? Is there a time? No, it's very common that the easements, stormwater agreements are submitted <coughs> in draft form with dates, for example, like when there'll be final approval or a recording, for example, or something like that. And the board approves them, and of course, you don't sign them until they actually are in final form. But if the board would be more comfortable with revised versions, Put it Wait off to the next meeting. It's really not with, a big deal. With, with all due respect, and, and I was just here to, to, to observe, just for the record, David Cooper, partner with the law firm, is Aaron Steinmetz here representing the uh, uh, Continental Commons, the applicant. These documents, including all of the exhibits that were just mentioned, have been provided to the town months ago, right? The, and, and not even years ago, because these were first provided to the planning board, in which your planning board attorney approved them. Your town attorney, your town engineer approved them, and then they were finalized, even those exhibits, and sent to Mr. Gabba months ago. So, so for the town to say, look, because we didn't put it into the, into the actual agenda packet, we're not going to vote on them tonight, that, that's not appropriate. Well, we're not saying the agenda packet. We're saying the dates and things like that. The, that but the, Mr. Gabba's correct. The, the, the date, un, until, until, until the board says, okay, you know, you've got the authority to sign them, we can't date them until, until you actually approve them. So we have to say, okay, and then you revise it, and then you approve it, then I sign it? Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. that's why it always works. Okay. So the dates and things are just look. If you prefer to have the date of the final conditional approval. No, no, no. What, what I mean, Mr. Gab, is when he give, when he finishes up the, after we vote to allow this to happen, he gives you paperwork and you review it, and the dates and all these other concerns will be correct. Will be correct. Yeah. And then when I sign it to approve it, it's good. Yeah. So yeah. The, the schedules will be attached and everything. So this is not going to be the final. No. Okay. That's why it says like insert date and things like right, that. Right. That's okay. Because we can't we can't record that until I've got a date. Understood. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak about that gentleman there? Stephen Powers for, uh, for Butcher Court, Fisker uh, Wood. I apologize. What's your name again? Stephen Powers. How you doing, Mr. Powers? Um, <coughs> you know, I, I would hope that Healy Brothers would want to be good neighbors and just do whatever they can to please all the people in this town for us letting them come here and build this really big building. At night, it's all light up, the whole sky is lit up, and I can see like four or five on the cars. Perhaps I need to get Healy Brothers' attention. Maybe a big sign, four feet by four feet, that says, Healy Brothers, bad neighbors, just might do it. So maybe I'll do that a try. I could probably do it right on this property here, given that this is New York State property and this government agency, even I, I could claim the First Amendment right to do that. So it's something I'm going to keep in my head. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Com Mr. Powers. Ms. Lagoy? Uh, <clears throat> hi. I, um, I just wanted to, um, on behalf of the Keep Fish Kill Beautiful volunteers, I wanted to thank Council Members Totino and Foreman and Supervisor Albra for attending our meeting on Monday. It meant a lot to me personally, as I said to each of you. Um, it also meant a lot to residents who have reached out and thanked us for holding it and for you to attend. So I just wanted to say that, so thank you. Um, 
the other thing that I wanted to say is, you know, I've been going back and forth um, up and down Route 9 lately, and what is happening at Duchess Mall? Like, I, I just, I cannot get my head around the fact, and I, I understand there might be some things that are being considered, and in my personal opinion, a warehouse, like, this is supposed to be the gateway into Fishkill. Like, let's think bigger <laughs> than, just, I mean, we may as well rename Route 9 industrial way. And, you know, to, to me and my 80-something-year-old mother as we drive up, she's like, oh, look at all of this bleep, you know, that's along Route 9. So, you know, a cultural center, and I'm going to throw this out there. You know, there's so much controversy around the doomed to fail project that is going on uh, across the street from the Duchess Mall. Why was something not facilitated for that to happen at this horribly just, you know, eye assault of, of the Duchess Mall? Uh, and I don't understand why the property owners, are they being fined? Because if that was at my house, why are they not getting fined? As, as long as the building is boarded up and no one can get into it, are you kidding me? Do you know how many people are in that I, building? I, There's a Cadillac in that building. There is. It's been there for a while. The, uh, the issue is the property values. In Dutchess County, there aren't many spots like that left. So it's a very valuable piece of land. Okay. And I'm, and then they should have plenty of money to pay those fines. If it's, if it's boarded up. But it's not properly boarded up. I'm going to say, I'm going to say something. That site is a dumping ground for animals, okay? I know this personally. I no longer go on that property because the last time I went on that property, my camera got stolen, my, and I didn't realize this until I was already back there and picking up my trap, and I hear a bunch of ruckus. That's how I discovered that there's a Cadillac in that building. So these buildings are not boarded up. They are very busy hubs for, pe for the exact kind of person that we don't want in Fishkill. So I don't know, I mean, are they getting inspected to see that they're properly boarded up? Because if I can just walk behind the building and see the car in plain sight inside the building, I would think that that's not properly boarded up. And I've been here for 25 years. I remember just moving here and there was like three stores left. That tells you how long this has been just an eyesore and a, a disgusting sight. How disrespectful to our very first patriots who many of them died, they fought, they had their families come and take care of them. And, and this is how we are responding to this sacred property. So, you know, again, warehouse, not my first choice. Cultural center, sports complex, a theater, something that actually might bring in some more revenue than just this, you know, another box. It, it just... It, that's what it's that's in my the, opinion. That's what it's in the planning board right now. I understand that. I under, hopefully, it, you know, something will happen and it doesn't doesn't go through. Okay. But the the fine, I'm sorry, I do not <coughs> accept that for 20 something years these people have not been able to get fined because they have the the buildings boarded up. That's nonsense. It, anybody can tell you it's not boarded up. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Sir, I'm sorry. I'll stand behind you. Hi, Maria, Maria Galliano. I live in Fox Ridge, 37 Spruce Ridge Drive. Um, I'll say at least you probably know better than me, 10 or however many years ago, there was a woman and her child who got killed in the stroller on 52. At the time, I spoke with the then town supervisor about how we needed sidewalks all along here. And um, I was told that, like, well, 52, you know, it's done by the state, so, you know, we have no control. But since that time, anytime something new has been built, sidewalks have been required. All the work that was done between the gas station, the Sunoco station, and 84 Diner, there's a sidewalk over there. Um, when 
when the wood, Fishkill Woods got installed, they had to put a sidewalk over there. How come Healy Brothers didn't have to put a sidewalk? And I just feel like everybody's standing here, you know, and everybody's saying what they think, but it sounds like we can't do anything. And that's really frustrating. And so what can we do? Can we all contact somebody in New York State? We're all residents. We all pay taxes. We, we need like an action plan here. We don't just need like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need like some action that we can take because we need to make a change soon so that, you know, it's safe out here. I, at the time, this I know this was, I don't know how many years ago it was, but my son was young and he wanted to walk to Gearing Park from here. And I was like, no, it's not safe. He's 21 now, so for years, we've been asking for sidewalks out here. And it's just really disappointing that we're still like coming here complaining about it and then you know, we don't have any action. So can, can anybody tell us what we can do here? What can we do? I, I tell you what I've, I've done and I'm gonna be following up. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll talk to Ozzy tomorrow because I know we'll be developing something here, but, and John. Um, but I forwarded this to AJ Pen, our assemblyman, uh, the plans that Bridget forwarded to me. And I said, you've got a lot of people here aggravated and you're our assemblyman and we need to discuss what we can do to work with New York State DOT and, and take care of their issues here of sidewalks and so I hope to be able to I think the state DOT is going to respond to the supervisor a lot quicker than they're going to respond to 50 phone calls because he representing the people who are affected by this so I think we have a plan I, it's going to have to be done uh, yesterday, but uh, I then, think that's the idea. Okay, and then I guess I guess my other my other suggestion, and and, and I, I didn't hear anybody speak about this, but the other problem is, if you live in Fox Ridge, which a lot of us do, you can't get out by the Sunoco station anymore because <coughs> the traffic is too bad. Now we have Healy Brothers, and we're going to have extra lanes apparently, and so. Now we're not going to be able to get out at the Fox Ridge entrance. So we need some traffic lights. We needed traffic lights for years, right? If we had a traffic light by the Sunoco station, then, you know, maybe the woman and her child wouldn't have got killed crossing the street. So, you know, I hear everybody, oh, yeah, safety, safety. Well, why, why are there no traffic lights? And what can we do to get a traffic light? so that we can get out, so that people can walk, people can cross. Have you ever seen someone try to cross 52? They're like taking their life in their hands. My kids wanted to, when they were younger, wanted to cross over to the, the deli and I never let them go. So, so can we add traffic light maybe? To our Listen, I, 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 we the, can ask. The, the citizens on Wheaton Avenue, just north of uh, the light, want a light? DLT said that these are the only lights they're putting up from here at the Beacon to Red Schoolhouse Road. Those questions have been asked. Well, then maybe, you know, maybe we shouldn't have agreed to, like, put this big, giant building there because there's going to be so much traffic now. And the, the traffic out here is a disaster anyway. It's always a disaster. And now it's going to be so much worse. And then the people that live there, we're not even going to be able to get out. It's really disappointing. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Good evening, everyone. I have nothing to talk about your situation. Okay? <laughs> and I apologize if I feel for it. They are the action. They are. That's why they voted. They were voted in. It's up to them to stand up for all of us. That's their job. They took it over. Yeah. Oh. Nobody's going to hear you. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Anyway, they are the action. Uh, so I'm going to just take a couple of minutes here. And I want to read. What was uh, your name? Oh, that's right, my name. Gregory Harlan. I'm a resident of the town of Fishkill. And uh, I want to address the board. First of all, thank you, Mr. Opera, for your past military and law enforcement service. I appreciate that. Uh, my brother served in the military, West Point graduate, uh, back in 
1971 or 74. He graduated, probably one of the first from the town of Fishkill. And my son did two tours in Iraq, so I appreciate that. And I appreciate your law enforcement service, too, and your performance as the town supervisor. I think you're doing a good job. Let it be known today that I'm thankful, thankful and totally supportive of our, of our members of the town of Fishkill Police Department. And my ensuing comments are specific in nature and do not reflect any negative connotations, implications, or associations of or towards members of the police department other than those whom I uh, address tonight. I stand before you tonight for three main reasons. One, I am advising the board and the residents of the town of Fishkill, and I apologize for my back, but that's the way it's set up, that I've switched from the Republican Party to the Conservative Party so that I can participate in a possible primary vote to help elect a new member to the board who will actually represent the best interests of all residents of this town. Second, I would like to speak about Scott Bears, who retired from the town of Fishkill Police Department in December of 2019 after serving this town for four decades, 40 years, with honor and distinction, and was even thanked by the town, uh, town board for his honorable service. And his reward for this service was having the past part-time police chief have his DCJS certification revoked without any notice or board oversight and approval and without due process. Why? The personal animosity against Scott Pierce by the past part-time chief, the current part-time chief, and the town of Fishkill Police Department, uh, of the town of Fishkill Police Department, and one Republican on this board and one conservative on this board is corrosive to the very fabric of fair play and equal justice under the law. On its face, the taking of Scott Pierce law enforcement certificate authorization by Division of Criminal Justice Service under the direction of previous part-time chief of police and upheld by the current part-time chief of police and the two mentioned board members would indicate and imply in the strongest insinuation that Scott Bierce committed heinous crimes and were engaged in criminality that would necessitate this action that prevents him from being a police officer in New York State. But he didn't commit any crime or engage in any behavior that would cause any police chief, even part-timers, to have Scott's certification, his livelihood, to be revoked, just hatred and spite against Scott Pierce and disdain to the new town supervisor. So I ask, where's the evidence for such a harsh, targeted display of desperation to prevent this retired police officer to ever hold a law enforcement job again in this state? I mean, Scott Pierce didn't even steal campaign signs. He didn't get arrested for possession of stolen property. Even though that behavior would violate any oath taken, it would not reach the level of revocation of due process that was not allowed. Well, there isn't any evidence, ladies and gentlemen, and or justification for it. I've read the receipts right here. These are the receipts. I've read them. These are depositions, five of them, regarding Scott Pierce's second lawsuit taken from some current and previous members of the town police department and past board members. That lawsuit ended in late 2022. Mr. Foreman and Mr. Rye, have you read these receipts? Have you read the depositions? I would say no, because if you did, that chief wouldn't be here today. I have, and I'm shocked by their testimony. Their lack of memory, lack of documentation, lack of leadership, lack of formal procedural practices, and just some statements, sorry, some statements that don't pass the smell test is, was overwhelming. A lot of I don't recall, I don't remember, I don't know, maybe to the best of my recollection, recollection and on and on and on. In fact, the current part-time chief had amnesia over 137 times. Astounding! Did, 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 did you know there was a personnel file in there? Well, I guess. I mean, are you kidding me? So I'm requesting that the board make all the depositions of this past lawsuit be made available to the public so that they could see just how poorly this police department is run. Since 2011, Scott Bears has had to file two lawsuits against the town police department because of egregious violations of his First Amendment rights, of which he won both cases. 
the fact that Mr. Foreman told me that Scott Pierce didn't win since they were settlements baffles my mind, baffles it, and indicates ignorance on what a win is, and he's in the insurance business. Or he's just an arrogant individual with a personal bias and rancor against Mr. Beers. You two, you two, all of you, took an oath to uphold the office and to use their votes, and you should use your votes as board members to join with their counterparts, the Democratic side, uh, um, including the town supervisor to reverse a great injustice against Mr. Scott Pierce, a town resident, and again, former member of the town official police department. Mr. Foreman and Mr. Rye, you may not personally like Scott Pierce, but you did take a note to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, including each citizen of this town. And the fact that Mr. Foreman sits on this board and has a vote, which he should abstain from, anything to do with Scott Bears on decisions regarding this town and residents thereof without having a dog in a hunt is so hypocritical. He doesn't pay town taxes. He doesn't pay school taxes here. Nor does he have a residence here. So he doesn't, and he doesn't have to worry about any water issues either. Every time I turn my sink on, I got to worry about my well going dry, as five neighbors already have in the last four years. And we want to join Route 9, give them all the water? How about us? When he was arrested, he used his civil lake home as his residence. And I bring this up because as I heard Mr. Foreman state at a previous board meeting uh, two ago, why hasn't Scott Beers come before the board and asked for a certification back? So I ask you, Mr. Foreman, why should he? Why should he beg you or this board to have what was wrongfully, wrongfully taken from him given back to him? Third, and in closing, citizens of the town of Fishko, Scott Beers was never charged or arrested. I say that again, and retired from the town in good standing. Don't believe the hype, the group think pack, the, the, that mentality. I read five of these depositions in the last lawsuit filed by Scott Bears against the town. The members of the police department who were deposed had nothing, nothing. It was embarrassing. After reading the depositions, I'm shocked, especially after a resolution, which was testified to in here, passed by a three to two vote by this supervisor when he first got in to send a letter to DCJS for Scott Bears to be reinstated. The current part-time police chief didn't sign it and said he wouldn't. So I'm calling on this part-time police chief to resign, go home, go back to your town. And if he doesn't, I'm calling on the entire board to ask him for his resignation or fire him. I mean, he's already stated in his testimony that he will not sign the letter to reauthorize Scott Bear's certification. So the town might as well save some money now, send him on his way, and start looking for an honorable part-time chief who will do the right thing by this town and all the citizens in it. I am also, again, requesting that the town be transparent and publish or make available all the depositions in the recent lawsuit so that everybody here can know the truth and stop the vilification and bleeding of Scott Bears and his family. Further, an apology should be made by all the actors involved to Scott Bears and his children who have been and are still enduring humiliation and character assassination against their father since 2011. My God, 2011, for the pain brought by this unconstitutional abuse of power against Scott Bears. So no matter what your political affiliation is or your personal association with anyone mentioned, this activity against Scott Bears is just plain wrong and should be rebuked by all the town residents to use lawfare and power of office to personally attack a citizen's character and livelihood should shock and alarm everyone. Because if allowed, you and or your family members may be at risk as well. Shame on all involved with this injustice against Scott Bears, and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Hold on. Anybody else that hasn't spoke would like to speak? Ms. Anderson? Bridget Anderson. Um, I just want to point out, go back to what we were talking about before with um, Healy in this turning lane, that 
the level of cooperation I have gotten from New York State DOT has far exceeded what I've gotten from the town of Fishkill. I would send them an email, they answered me back, they provided me whatever information they could without the FOIL request, they promptly sent me the FOIL request. They also stated in an email that I got from them that it was up to the applicant to provide the town with this information on the turning lane. It was not up to DO, because I asked them who was to provide it, and it was up to the applicant to do so. And clearly, since the drawings were done in September of 22, those drawings were available. So my question is, and whether it's to you or to the town's attorney, how do we ensure, because quite frankly, I don't have any confidence in our building department, um, how do we ensure that Healy doesn't, at the end of March, when I'm assuming the blacktop plants are going to open up because the web warm weather's coming, I think the sign on the firehouse said spring's 13 days away, um, how, that they don't move, move ahead with this project. How do we make that happen? Because clearly their work, their, this project is on private property. They have a right of way, but it's on our property. So I want to know, how, does that, how do we make sure that doesn't happen while you're um, reaching out to the you know, section, I think it's section eight or whatever, the region eight uh, <coughs> DOT folks? How do we make sure that they don't come and do exactly what they've already done, which is cut out a section of sidewalk, do their work, and then they came back? If, and if they have the permits, Bridget, they, they have a right to go and do it. The most we can on hope private for property. This is on our. They're, they're moving this sidewalk and doing the, the work must on must private. Must be in the state's right of way. It it's in there. It's be. in their right of way, but it's our property, isn't? We, if the state holds a right of way over your property, it has the ability to authorize improvements within it, at least way for the roadway. So how, how, do we, how do I light a fire under you guys to make this happen? Because clearly we got 93 no, homes in Fishkill Woods, and I'm not sure how many are in Fox Ridge, but you know, I'll has, be down there sitting on my sidewalk, not letting them take it up. So what are we going to do here? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, the town has Why no, not? Because <laughs> you could get hurt. <laughs> um, the, the town has no jurisdiction over Route 52. You know that. And the most we can do is try to work with the DOT in order to have changes in the approved plans for the improvements done. I don't know how quickly that can be done. This is kind of 11th hour, but we're going to try. We've talked about getting a letter out to whoever the Region 8 uh, official is in charge of this particular project. And you say they've been congenial when you've reached out to them. They may be sympathetic to the board in this particular case. How far they'll go, I, I can't promise you anything, but we can at least put the issue in front of them. But they're not going to revoke permits. There's not going to be a stop work order. If the permits have been issued, the work's going to go forward. That's why it's important to move quickly here. But I mean, but my frustration is this is at least the third time, if not more, times that I've been here saying something has been done wrong on this project that the town has not paid attention. And the only ones that are suffering from this are the town residents. They're parking cars where it was residential zoning. We said, oh, well, it's too late for that. They built a wall that was too high for the exact reason, I will point out, that I said that they did. And they had to go back to the planning board. And it was there, and we didn't make them take it down. They gave them a, P, you know, a CO for the building without having met all the planning board's requirements, and they went ahead and put through a permit for a turning lane that affects the residents of Fishkill Woods and Fox Ridge and the town of Fishkill, and we're back again behind the eight ball going, well, it's, too, it's a little bit too much too late, we'll try to do something. I have zero expectation that there's gonna be a different result than we've seen on this whole project. And we talk about, I've been here when you guys were screaming at each other about developers having the upper hand. Well, you know what? Healy has won every argument that they've made on this project. Everything that they've screwed up, everything that the town has let them get away with has, has been to the detriment of the, the people in the town. And the only reason, quite frankly, you guys are figuring this out is because I pointed out to you, and as I've said before, I'm not the town enforcement or code enforcement officer. I sit in the same classes as this guy does. I know all about the property maintenance code. You need to read the property maintenance code, because if you actually did, he'd be down there citing that property at the Duchess Mall, because that is not in compliance with the town maintenance code and the, the New York State property maintenance code. And I've told you guys that before. But his lack of action makes you all look like fools and makes us all suffer. Thank you.
Anybody else like to speak? Okay, thank you. Bearings here. Uh, All right, next up is the uh, liaison member reports. Uh, Councilman Tatino. Yes. Um, well, just, why don't we just wait a second, let people gonna leave. I'll hold up. All right, next up is liaison member reports. Councilman Totino, you can go first. Thank you very much, Supervisor. Um, as was alluded to, um, referenced by uh, Ms. Lagoy during the privilege of the floor, uh, Supervisor, Councilman Foreman, and I attended a meeting by Zoom on Monday night of Keep Fish Go Beautiful. It was good to be able to answer questions that residents had, and I thank uh, Karen Finnegan and Lagoy and the Key Fish Go Beautiful team for inviting us and hosting a forum. It just helps get more information out into the community. Uh, the more that residents know about the issues that we are dealing with here on the board, uh, the better the entire community is. So thank them again for their, uh, th their dedication to the community. Uh, just want to keep people in on some upcoming events at the Rec Center. Uh, on March 14th, we have our St. Patrick's Day lunch. Um, that, as I understand, is already full, which just speaks to the popularity of our rec programming, and I can't say enough for the job that they're doing over there. Speaking of that, the seniors will be going on a lunch trip to the Culinary Institute on March 20th. I understand that that is already full, so again, fantastic participation. Um, I understand we've got a couple of children's events coming up this month. There's going to be an Easter party, it looks like, around uh, the 21st, and then there's going to be the egg hunt at Gearing Park on March 30th. I know that that has been a big hit in the past, and I'm looking forward to being there uh, for that. Um, I send my regrets that I was not able to attend uh, the informational session and customer assistance meeting that was held here last Thursday. That was hosted um, by the town in partnership with our Assemblyman A.J. B. Pan. Um, residents have so many concerns with the issues uh, with Central Hudson's billing system that are causing people to receive erratic, inaccurate, and sometimes astronomical utility bills. It's simply unacceptable. I've had residents come up to me both during my time as an employee of the town and now as an official, um, just asking what the town can do about it. And hosting events like that uh, are a way to try and get customer service directly uh, here and accessible for the residents who need it. And I thank the board for putting that together. And I'm just sorry that I couldn't be there to take part as well. Do just want to let people know that uh, one week from tomorrow, that's gonna be March 14th, the State of the County Address from our new County Executive Sue Serena will be held at the Red Hook High School at 5.30 p.m. Um, this is her first uh, address as the County Executive. And uh, I know that we'll all um, you know, be wishing her well for that and be interested to hear um, her vision for the county as our new county executive. Um, I do just want to mention quickly uh, that March is Women's History Month. Um, I happen to have a, a wonderful 
opportunity to observe that every day uh, in the course of my day job working with the New York State Senate. Um, my boss is the first woman to lead a legislative uh, committee at the state legislature level. Uh, she is the first black woman to be a majority leader uh, in the New York State uh, government. And on Monday, uh, excuse me, on Friday of last week, uh, March 1st, I had a chance to visit a home here in the Hudson Valley in Irvington in Westchester that belonged to Madam C.J. Walker, who was the first self-made female millionaire in American history. And she also happens to be the first documented black millionaire in American history. It was wonderful to tour her estate. Uh, it was tragic to learn that she only lived in it for one year before her death in 1919. And that makes her status as a millionaire all the more impressive when you consider that she had a million dollars to her name at a time when a cup of coffee and a sandwich would cost a nickel. That's all I have. John? Okay. Um, just real quick, I've had a few meetings with uh, several of our department heads. Um, I also participated in the Keep Fish Go Beautiful Zoom meeting. The topic of that meeting was uh, the grant for the consolidation of uh, several water and sewer districts. And I also wanted to thank Assemblyman B. Fan and Central Hudson for having their important event right here in Fish Gallery. That's all. Brian? Yes, I was glad I spoke up and we got. Um, the Central Hudson meeting here and uh, thank AJ for that and I know that Ozzy and I uh, attended for a while um, I've also been meeting um, with highway and I know that they are moving along with uh, uh, rebuilding over there but of course keeping everything um, in good shape for the town um, and I didn't attend the fish kill beautiful thing but I sent a two to three page email uh, giving lots of background on uh, that whole topic and uh, that's pretty much it okay I just got a couple updates on our um, one of the things I was mentioned earlier with the fire fire chief there um, he mentioned touched on EMS uh, it's a problem not only in Fishkill and Dutchess County New York and the entire United States and people coming past town hall you'll see the ambulance parked over there uh, so I want to give you an update a little bit about our, our uh, ambulance service uh, dear Mr. Albert Empress is proud of our partnership with the town of Fishkill in providing 24-7 emergency medical services. As you're aware, Dutchess County is currently explore, exploring enhancements to EMS coverage in the county. The purpose is letters to provide you with a summary of the EMS service provided to your community since January 1st. Uh, from January 1st till the 1st of May, March, emergency medical services were requested in the town of Fishkill. Uh, the Roundabout uh, Ambulance District, the Village of Fishkill 355 times. Ampers responded to 341 of these calls in the following manner. 284 responses by our dedicated units and 54 response by additional Ampers units. On 14 occasions, our units were occupied on other calls in the service area, resulting in a need for mutual aid. We are pleased to provide this level of pre-hospital care to Fishkill and its residents. Uh, and then there's a map showing what's going on here. And then, uh, Later on today, I got a letter from the, uh, the county executive's office uh, directed to all the mayors and supervisors. It, it is a county thing, and uh, uh, Thursday I'll be uh, taking a ride up there in support of this type of legislation. Uh, mayors and supervisors, uh, as you know, EMS across Dutchess County, New York State, and the nation are facing unprecedented challenges impacting communities every day. We detail the critical issue and the steps in the county the county has taken as your mayors and supervisors association meeting on january 24th at the department of emergency response among those steps was the issuance of a, a request for express interest the responses to the rfei received last week are currently being reviewed and our intent is to issue a request for proposal to secure supplemental ems resources to be able to address the gaps in coverage emergency response commissioner dana smith will be updating the dutchess county legislators tomorrow afternoon thursday uh, with the information pr presented in the latest public update so the county is take also taking this seriously and it looks like they're going to break the county into six regions and uh, fishkill will be southwest dutchess region four when i get more information i'll let you guys know uh next up is the governor uh, a lot of people commute to new york city and they they have a fear of uh, criminal activity on the subways uh, the governor today announced a plan to put uh, new york state police and the uh, national guard to check on passengers and their uh, their luggage and baggage on the subways to uh, keep us safe and then finally here something locally with our water infrastructure that, that you know i've been talking a lot uh this is from uh, mike tremper 
uh, as you, if you watch the meetings, about a couple of meetings ago, we did an emergency uh, connection with some valves, just in case something happens in the uh, Brickeroff Water District, which would have been catastrophic, where, where people would have been out for probably weeks without water. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the Brickeroff Water Supply is situated such that well fields are located on the south side of the railroad tracks and Route 82. The majority of the customers being located on the north side of the railroad tracks and Route 82. The system uses two 10-inch transite transmission mains to get the water from the wells to the population. These two water mains uh, run inches apart and on top of each other under Route 82. There were no work involved to isolate these transmission lines. A broken pipe under Route 82 would have been a disaster for days with a loss of water, boil water notices, and extreme emergency repair costs. The town uh, approved an emergency repair to install two isolation valves on each transmission main. And that gives us the ability to shut down the leaking main and utilize the other uh, main to supply water to its residents. This work was completed on March 5th. Uh, with the exception of landscaping, they got to fix up some lawns. Uh, this is the, their town board making sure that your water is uh, in shape. And uh, I thank John, Brian, and, and Greg for uh, letting me do this emergency repair. So that's it for my dis my supervisor comments. There's no presentations. Um, next up is discussion. Uh, discussion number one: discussion of proposal to expand the town official war memorial to include to include additional theaters of conflict. Uh, myself, Councilman Rye, and uh, Virgil Capillary, who's on the uh, Veterans Committee, uh, they contacted me, and I think it's a go for us to do a, uh, a Sidney Schofield uh, monument. Uh, he was killed. He was the only fiscal resident killed in the Spanish-American War. Are you guys okay with me moving on that? Absolutely. Okay. Joe? We, we asked them to, you know, make a decision, come together, and I'm just very glad the, the Veterans Committee did just that. And mm -hmm. They're involved in this. This is their recommendation. I think it's great. Excellent. We're good. So yeah, we're going to. We have to find out. We we'll have to find out where they're the marble that they made, and we're going to get that done. Next up is discussion of signage for the. Table out. Could I close it, and when we get the marble ready, to vote on the appropriation sure. on that? Yeah. Okay. We'll so just close it. it. Yep. And number two, discussion of signage for the town war memorial. We were going back and forth uh, about using the logos for the uh, armed services on the rec building. The, uh, the committee is not in favor of that. Uh, I support that decision, and they're going to come up with some other solutions. Are you okay with that? Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, of course, they, I, I can appreciate they want something that's um, sort of singled out by itself, and I get that. One of the things that I did suggest to Virgil to tell them <clears throat> is when we do do this agreement with Fishkill Historical Society to begin moving on the monument, which hopefully they pass that this Saturday, and hopefully we're moving on that. Um, uh, I said, you know, we're going to have a landscape architect that's giving of her time, and maybe she can help design something that would be appropriate that fits into that okay. whole redesign. So, you know, I would say that something will come in due time that would with their involvement. Um, okay. How far can we push this off on the uh, IQM2? This year. All right. Uh, August. Okay. All right. Next up, discussion at amending Chapter 90 of the Town Code, the Town of Fishville. Is that the U term, Mr. Gabba? Um, 90 is the um, garbage, rubbish, and refuse. Oh. That yep. was going to be the, I believe, the um, property maintenance law. Yes. So I think I mentioned to you earlier, they're, they're duplicative. There's, there's they're duplicative. Two, okay. two, two items here. So I had a couple of questions where we took out the painting of wood fences, right? The yep. painting of wood fences. And we had a question about firewood. What would the impact of firewood be on that? We changed it to um, state that uh, if it was being stacked um, for seasoning, that um, it would be considered a, um, a violation of the property maintenance code if it was stacked wood for immediate burning if you had a pile of firewood that you're going to bring into your house or using your your wood wood stove or whatever it might be that that would not be is that reasonable I think a couple got, no that's I not reasonable i don't think i don't think it is come on because come on a lot of people burn wood and fish a lot of people together, burn wood and so. they stack it and they season it and yeah i think that's a little too restrictive was language you guys suggested. I know. <laughs> okay. hey, listen, I thought we were going <coughs> to have listen, more discussion people, before we passed it, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, my fault. <coughs> hey, good evening. Yeah. <clears throat> my, my only comment, uh, my name's Brian. Um, I'm a resident of Fishkill, Brian McGuinness. Um, the only uh, distinction I would ask for there is that sometimes there's wood that does need to be seasoned 
um, and you are making the distinction between corded wood and seasoned wood, once you cord wood, it has to be burned within a certain amount of time or it will begin to go bad. So if you want to be able to keep wood for, let's not say, not just this season, but the subsequent season, you need to keep that log. And so it's almost like you take your logs, you stack your logs, you pull down your logs and cord them for what you intend to burn. But if you cord all your wood at once, you're going to run out of wood before, um, or you're going to, the wood is going to go bad before you can burn and get the heat that you need out of it. So in that regard, you're kind of creating a situation where um, for people, especially with smaller pieces of land, it's going to be very hard to store the way you're recommending logs that might be held for subsequent season burnings. Can we table this for one more? Well, can we just scratch that section out? Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, this was yeah. put in initially because there was concern that people would go in and clear lots yeah. and leave the felled trees there for yeah. an unreasonable amount of time. And uh, that's the way I had it drafted initially. Then the concern came up about, well, what about if they cut and stack the wood? Well, it depends if it's seasoned or is it being corded. I would recommend, and I, you know, you guys may have other considerations, but take out that latest provision that we just put in regarding seasoning wood and corded wood. Leave it the way I had it before with just the, uh, the felled trees. And we can accept out seasoned and corded wood if you want, if you want to make that extra clear. Is but that I mean, okay with you, Mr. McGinnis? Why don't we just leave it out? Yeah. If you have it intending to be burned, I don't know if you need this. Yeah, yeah. If you have it to be burned, come up. There's, like I said, a lot of people burn wood in Fishkill, and I want to make sure I don't yeah, get 50 I'm, people I'm, in here mad at me. So. Yeah, because I've had some discussions with a bunch of my neighbors that also have, and if you come down where we are in Fishkill, you'll notice a lot of people that actually have full log wood on their property that they are using to burn. And some people have logs delivered with the intention of having two or three years worth of firewood because they're getting the economies of buying logs and having them yeah. and storing them. So, um, I mean, you got to think about the provision, uh, even if it's corded, you're saying that the wood can't be stacked more than one foot high. So if I have a cord of wood, for example, and I need to store it, I need a stack that if I'm going to stick to your one foot high regulation, it has to be 32 feet long by four feet wide. So now take that same concept and say, okay, if you haven't corded it, the same rule applies. Now I've got logs that on their own are maybe about a foot. I mean, I, I'm not, you'd almost have to be blanketing your backyard with wood in order to hold on for like two seasons worth of wood. So I would just say like, I mean, unless, and then I'm just thinking about just the pure amount of people who burn wood. And then if we're going to go out and look at every single person that has a pile of wood and make a determination on what needs to be done with it, I think we're going to be using a lot of our valuable time of our resources to just go look at wood piles because there's a lot of people, at least from what I see, who burn wood. My recommendation would be that if it's very clear that it is wood with the intent to be burned and it is uh, appropriately identified, that uh, that just be an exception, whether it's you're seasoning it or it's already corded. Yeah, the, the issue I have is the, it being very clear that it's to be burned or that the intent is, because it's so easy for somebody to say, oh, yeah, it's just being seasoned out there. Um, it, it might be best to, to table this for now. I'll, I'll have it reworked for the next meeting. And the, you, you, said there was, you said there was a height requirement? Yeah, there's a height requirement of like one foot, which like, like for example, when I stack my firewood near my house where I'm pulling it in to burn, I'm stacking it like almost no, no, four No, I do the same thing. Tall. Can, can yeah. we get rid of that height requirement? I'm not sure the height requirement's in the law. It is. It is. All right. You but have one foot. We certainly look at it. No, no yeah, take, 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 take it out. Look. Yes. Yeah, take, I just, I just don't know how one foot's ever, I mean, like a foot off the ground. I mean, you're pretty much decking your backyard right. with yeah. wood if, yeah. if that's what, it, what we're requiring. So, well, that's yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to look at the practicality of it, and I'm also thinking about, I understand there's an enforcement component component and I don't know if we want our town resources running around expecting firewood. No, 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 I sure, certainly understand. It sounded that. like there were some really noble causes here that folks are asking for yeah. the building department to get involved in. Excellent. Yeah, I would hate to see that diluted by like a pile of wood. Gotcha. So, my two cents, but thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Uh, this, these provisions allow us to take abandoned car, uh, cars off of people's properties too? The law defines um, rubbish as including um, junk cars. Junk cars. Good. So if there are junk cars on property unregistered vehicles, then the town would have the ability to issue a property maintenance uh, violation citation for that and take such actions would be appropriate to get them removed and okay. you know, get the 
violation cleared up. That was my concern. Uh, so let, let's go back to the wood thing. You're going to strike that second part and get rid of the height requirement. I, I'm going to strike that whole second part, which he says includes that provision. I don't recall that, but I want to revisit the issue of the felled trees and see if there's a way that can be kept in because okay. we've had residents come and say yes. that that's an issue. And um, I think there's a way I can differentiate the two um, or perhaps put in an exception for seasoned and, and firewood. Um, like I said just now, there may be an issue with whether it's clear that something is for firewood or for seasoning or not, there's got to be some way that we can distinguish between just logs laying all over the yeah. yard and, and firewood that's been cut down with, with a purpose. I'm not quite sure how to do that tonight, but I'm, I'm sure I can come up with something. Okay. And no staining and painting on wood fences, right? That's already out. Done. Good. I, I just, um, <clears throat> as you know, my husband and I burn a lot of wood. That's how we heat our house. Um, and I respectfully disagree that you need to leave it there without cutting it. I, I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the idea behind this law is that neighbors are not overlooking other neighbors who have logs and piles of, of logs on, on their property line. There are, you know, uh, it, it does lend itself to, and I know this personally, mice because it's a nice little habitat, which then in, invites snakes, which then invites raccoons, which then invites other wildlife. Yes, we're in Dutchess County, and there's wildlife, and we have to live to, you know, learn to live with that, or happily live with that. But I think that, um, you know, there's a, a couple of different things, and I would hate to have something just omitted from it because we have one opinion that maybe that's not a good idea. There are differing opinions on, you know, how to stack wood, how to cut wood, what's the best way to cut wood, you know. So I, I think that you are smart to table this, but the idea, if I did understand it correctly, was to protect neighbors who are looking and and seeing just these these really obnoxious looking piles of wood so you know and and who's to say just to your point um oh yeah i'm gonna burn that you know well it could rot on the ground i mean that's how i see it you know and that has happened to us where it hasn't been cut in time and there's a log laying on the ground it rots that's what rots not cut wood stacked but anyway, that's just my, my two cents, that there are certainly different uh, opinions on the proper way to cut and stack wood. <laughs> Greg, you want to make a comment on that? I just worry about, I'm 70 years old, and I just had a bunch of logs dropped off of my house. It's already <laughs> taken me three weeks just to cut them. Now I'm in the process of trying to split them. What, am I going to get fined? I mean, no. you know, that's... There's got to be, yeah. like, it just can't be arbitrary it. that, you know, it's going to take me another month. And it's on my property. You can see from the road. So you got to work this out because I yeah, burn yeah. a lot of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, Mr. Gab, a lot of people burn wood in fish kill, so we got to make sure we get this right. We'll, we'll come up with reworked language and the board will look it over. We'll have a public hearing on it. And, and I'm sure we can come up with something that will satisfy. We have to have a, I thought we closed a public hearing on this. On, on the property maintenance look? We haven't started, right? We, we no, set the that hasn't been introduced. To to we did the U-turn to today. Okay. All right. But that should be tabled, too. So how long we should table that to? Well, would you mind the first week in April? Give me a okay. little bit more time. That's for first week in April? Well, the first meeting in April. We, we, have, a, we have the uh, uh, ready for the public hearing? I'll have it ready for introduction. Introduction. It's setting the public hearing. Because there's other people complaining about cars and totally different things. Just I understand, but and it's, it's all April. Part of people this start thing. cleaning the yards, and they're going to see these other properties not up to par, and they're going to start calling me and say, hey, "What are you doing?" I understand. Okay. Next up, discussion of resolution to approve the peddler's permit for uh, Cousins Main Lobster. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Number five, discussion of resolution to support the waterfront and fiscal phase phase uh, six <coughs> development. We had, a, we had the uh, developer come in in October and do this presentation. This will just be getting support from the senator and uh, the assembly people to uh, move this forward. Any questions? I do. I have sure. a question. I mean, obviously, it's going to be great for the town. Of course, plans have yet to be developed, and he's got to get access to the property over the tracks. I know what we're doing here is saying we're good with that, and hopefully it does help him. But uh, I just, you know, I, I'm, 
I see in there we we have uh, a future obligation to maintain a bridge. I don't, unless I missed it, who puts in the bridge? <laughs> you know, is that the grant? Because I read in there that he's going to get a grant the, writer the, to maybe get a bridge. Is, how is that worked the, out? The, the, the discussion is that development, we, it's possible that we create a, uh, a, a bridge district for the people that live there, right. like, like an HOA type of thing, right. and they would be responsible for the maintenance of the bridge. They would? Yeah. We I can write Mr. Yeah, but we can do that, I right? I thought the that's town correct. is. Yes. No, the town will not be responsible. That's for good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Good. What, so, does a, what does us voting on this? It just gives him more leverage to try to get some grants and stuff. It, doesn't it help him with also the... The MTA. Yeah, the ITA and, and yeah. saying the town's behind it. Give me exactly. the right to cross over the tracks. Right. But that's, that, that's what we would create is a, uh, a bridge district. <clears throat> And those homeowners will be responsible for the maintenance of it. Yeah, it could. All right. Next up, number six, discussion of resolution to waive the 30 day hold on liquor license for Mega Fun Works. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Next up, number seven, discussion of resolution approving stormwater management uh, facility easement and maintenance agreement for Continental Commons. Uh, Ms. Danny Lay talked about that. Mr. Gabba talked about it. You okay with voting on it? Yeah. We're good, Mr. Gabba? Again, the substance of the two documents, the brush clearing and the stormwater, are not in question. The wording is correct. The obligations undertaken by the property owner are correct. There's some language in the whereas clauses and the one schedule that's not attached to brush clearing. You will have those before they're submitted for signing and filing okay. by the town. All you're doing now is saying that you accept the documents Understood. The documents need to be finalized Understood. so i don't have a problem with going forward tonight if you want to wait and see the final date of the subdivision or site plan approval put in instead of the preliminary date i um, be happy to redraft them and resubmit them it's, it's up to you guys well you're not going to sign them unless it's all appropriate exactly anyway, so not. yeah i'm certainly good with moving forward with the vote i do just want to clarify to avoid the appearance of impropriety there was a suggestion that Councilman Foreman should not vote, simply asking for your take on that. We've gone over this before. There is no legal disqualification of Councilman Foreman. It's up to him as to whether he can be fair and impartial. Okay. Next one is the uh, the trees for the same property. Everybody okay with that? Mr. Yeah, just gave you a thing. Okay. Same, yeah. same thing. Number nine, discussion of budget modification of the 2024 General Fund adopted budget for supervisor expenditures and website upgrade and medical benefits. Uh, I don't take... Um, the budget prepared for last year included um, a family plan. I have a family plan from my job that I retired from. So in the last five years, I probably saved the residence of Fishco about $150,000. But wasn't put in there was the medical buyout, which is $2,500. And that's what that is about. And then there's an expenditure for the website upgrade, uh, which is a... Uh, it's a new wrinkle there. Yeah, it's a new wrinkle, but we're going to be able to do it in-house a lot cheaper. For about less than eight thousand dollars, where if we went somewhere else, it'd be about thirty. Well, yeah, we have to be determined, but it, yeah. you know, it sounds like there's a great possibility to save a lot of money. Okay. Next up, number ten, discussion of resolution introducing a local law and setting the public hearing property maintenance. There you go, Mr. Gabba. That's so that would be tabled as well to April. Table that one, it's to the April. Same, it's the exact same thing. Okay. The same date, April first, please. Number 11, a resolution setting the amount uh, for performance and maintenance security for Westage Self Storage. The planning board, I think, recommended 1.1 uh, something, and uh, I think an agreement for 700000 was acceptable. I, I read think. that, yeah. Is that okay with you guys? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. So that's a. That's so a supervisor, just because this is still something kind of new, could you just explain again to the residents what the performance and security bond is? Yes. So, so what happened? Um, the lady mentioned the uh, Duchess self, the Duchess uh, of the Mall. Uh, there was a uh, there's a property still ongoing on Route 8252, the old uh, Cube Smart project, mm -hmm. and um, they were the property looks like that because there was no maintenance agreement like we have now. So if this developer comes in and uh, abandons the place, we could use this money to reclaim the property. So it's a, it's, it was a real good law that we passed two or three years ago. Yeah, that 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 type of protection is a quality of life protection we're talking about developers who wish to complete a project but for whatever reason may not be able to do so may leave the property in question in a state of disrepair 
uh, you know, that becomes an eyesore. That detracts from surrounding property values. It detracts from quality of life for people who have to drive past or live with this in their community. So it is good to see that law being put into practice. Excellent. Uh, number 12, discussion of the budget modification to the uh, 2020 uh, David Adam Fund, adopted budget for highway insurance recoveries for damaged trucks due to fire on January 27th. Any comments on that? No. No. I got it that. speaks I got for itself. It. Yeah. Know. It's, it was a, uh, a truck caught fire in, in the highway garage, four tires burnt, and uh, could have been a lot worse, but the, uh, the residue from the burnt tires really put some damage on the town highway department. And uh, Superintendent Esteban is working diligently with his crew to get that place uh, cleaned up. We appreciate him for his hard work on that. So we're good with that. Number 13, discussion of bottom budget modifications to the 2024 General Fund Adopted Budget for Highway. Uh, for, for This is a different incident. This is uh, insurance recoveries for lease camera due to an incident on 113-24. So uh, on Merritt Boulevard, we put some flashing lights out on Merritt Boulevard by Vanderbilt about three years ago. Uh, in January, we got a, a camera that uh, would detect the weather. And then less than two weeks after that was installed, uh, an individual, individual hit the pole and destroyed the camera. So less than two weeks, that sucker's gone. Yeah. He, that, that, that the operator was unlucky. Unlucky, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was a nice camera, too. But we'll get that one back. Um, next up is number 15, discussion and resolution to promote uh, John Testerman from Buildings and Grounds to a uh, uh, truck driver. Everybody okay with that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Good man. Congratulations, John. Yep, yeah. Uh, 16, discussion for the police department to ask the police department for assistance with the Tom Town Home Towns Town Heroes banner replacement. We're okay to vote on that. Any well, questions? He, can I just make a comment? They, sure. The chief is already engaging the superintendent we can vote on that but okay. uh but you know he he's already working out a schedule they have a schedule they will be working together should there be a time when they want to install and there may be uh, a lack of a personnel on that day uh they already have an agreement that a uh, highway truck with lights will be there to block so they're working on that with the eventual potentially next year it'll be all highway taking care of it to begin with okay uh, next, number 17, discussion and resolution to accept the resignation of police officer Kevin Martin. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. And the last one is discussion of hiring a full-time police chief. We discussed that pretty good last week. It's up for a vote tonight. Any questions for this right now? Not right now. No questions. Okay. So next up is... Let's move he's, on, he's on for resolution already. I yeah. think so. It's resolution. The banners on that. Yeah. Care. All right, next up is privilege of the floor for agenda items. This is now the opportunity to speak about anything that was spoken about tonight. Okay. Well, I, I do. Sure. I have an issue, again, with uh, what was stated here last week, Mr. Wright, when you said that the part time lieutenants can take their cars home uh, and they should be able to uh, and you said the uh, uh, on-duty part-time lieutenant should take the car home which I agree with but you said it was important for them to take the car home because they answer phones do text messages and emails what they leave their house go to the car and do that it's only a little bit of gas a toll well you pay for it you take my tax dollars that I pay you and take those dollars and you pay for the gas. You pay for the toll. There's no reason why anybody should be taking their car home in a part-time police department. But if the chief has to, fine. That's the status. If you have an on-duty lieutenant, that's fine. Other than that, they could drive back and forth or move into town. Then they could save their own gas because they all live out of town. So I, I don't agree with that at all. And another thing, you're talking about consolidating water districts. I mentioned it earlier. I worry every time I flush the toilet or turn the water on. There's water on Siskars. There's mm -hmm. water on Red Scoss Road. Why isn't there water up on Paradise Heights or along Red Scoss Road, Bedford and that? Why aren't we tagged in? You'll take care of the developers over here and, and load them up with water. But we've lived here our whole lives. We can't even get water. And it's so close. 
Who's taking care of developers? Well, you are. No, I'm not. You want to consult? Oh, don't no, tell I'm me not. that. It's got nothing to do oh, with it. Oh, it does. When you consult no, it doesn't. a war district, no, it doesn't. you open no, up that war. Oh, please. No, it doesn't. Yeah, well, you see, I don't know a see, developer. You're on, you're on and, town and water. You don't totally have to worry fun. about it. You didn't you're on town water. Grant. You didn't read the grant. Oh, the grandstanding. You're doing a great job, but you didn't read the grant. Grandstanding. So that's incorrect. Where's my water? Oh, find out where the water district is. Work on that issue. The grant has no, nothing no, to do with that. When you I don't know water district, a developer. They, the developers that's not what that was about. Water in then. It's been and fully the explained. Pay taxes You're doing here. a great job yeah, grandstanding. No, you're you just, totally incorrect. You just want to. No, 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 buddy. It has yeah, nothing to do with it. You don't have to worry you about it. Didn't you don't have to worry about, about it. it. All right, guys. I'm done. You didn't read it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else want to speak about town items only? Uh, my apology, agenda. agenda items only. Okay, Bridget. Bridget Anderson, 29 Pritchard Court. I just wanted to comment about the agenda item concerning the property maintenance code and the fact that we spent all this time talking about stacked firewood when in fact we aren't enforcing the existing property maintenance code for at the Duchess Mall on the end of the mall. So if we're getting, how can we not be worrying about that, but worrying about how high wood's being stacked and whether it's split and corded and, and all that. So if we're gonna, if you're gonna have a law, you need to be able to enforce that. And that means we need to enforce the ones that we already have. Can I, can I say something? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that whole thing supposedly was gonna be redeveloped. Mm -hmm. But as we understand, the person, the company, the whatever, they got the permits, they got the plans put through, something I've just learned, they pulled out. So now we have this sucker that's sitting out there and I've been complaining about it as well. I thought, well, let's don't work on anything as far as enforcement. The whole thing's gonna be torn down and a, and a, and a brand new building's gonna be put in, brand new uh, 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 parking lot, the whole deal. It's, but that's done. So I'm extremely frustrated with the look of that as well. It bothers me, and I really would like to have a discussion about how that can finally be reconciled. Are we gonna wait around another one, two, three, five years? Because it is disgusting, it is an eyesore. And there's a dead body down there. I don't know what's going on with the golf course. I've played golf there a ton of times. I've been by there, it's evil looking, it's just disgusting. So it, there are many, many, many people that complain about the looks of that, and we need to take a look at that. Well, I'm going to, and I was told I could do this, so I'm going to put on my Dutchess Community College hat because we have our new extension site down there, which is beautiful. And, but people have to, if you're coming from the south to that site, you have to come in the south entrance to that plaza, mm -hmm. which is not being maintained. It's full of potholes. You're horrible. seeing that building. You're seeing all the garbage. It, it's just, it's an embarrassment. And quite frankly, it, it reflects poorly on the college. Um, we're doing our best to build that center up. We, I think, pretty much most of you have been there. Yeah. It's it's a gorgeous facility, but you have to drive by that train wreck yeah. um, to I'm get in you. there. And yeah. I don't know what else to do but to tell you. I don't know. We got to have a conversation about that. You need to enforce the current law before right. you add to it and worry about how high firewood is stacked. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I was inspired, so I just had to come say something. I, I, I think, you know, when you think about everything that was talked about tonight, what keeps resonating to me is that we're trying to do the most that we can with the limited resources that we have. People are making very, very compelling arguments about things that we do need to look at, things that we need to take a deeper dive into. But if we're going to continue to put legislation that takes those resources to go check out piles of firewood when we have some very real issues to go look at, with only a couple of people, how much are we really gonna get done in the day? So I think there's this whole other overarching piece of what does Fish Kill consider important with the limited resources that we have and what do we prioritize? Okay. And um, I think the point that uh, someone else made about if it's one person that's vocalizing something, I know I'm one person talking about the firewood, but there's plenty of people in Fish Kill that are in the same position as me. So maybe just one person coming and talking about it doesn't mean it's one person's issue. I'm one but of those it, people too. So there you go. There's more of us out there than I get a cord dropped every year, bud. So and you know what I'm I don't talking stack about. it three feet high. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. 800 feet long. So <laughs> trust me. I got you. 
But uh, it just sounds like, you know, uh, uh, how much harm are we doing to ourselves if we keep giving the couple of people that have a job to do more jobs to do for things that maybe aren't as important? Are we diluting our resources and making them more effective and then complaining about their ability to get around to do what it is we need them to do? Good point. So, yeah. Very good point. Big picture thought. Good point. But thank you. Thanks, sir. Louise? I just want to reiterate what I said before. Um, obviously, it didn't take it out of consent agenda, which means that Council Member Foreman is going to be voting on that. Um, and it shows, in my opinion, he has a sense of entitlement that he, may not, he does not believe that he has to inform the public of any perceived potential conflicts he may have with developers when the projects come before them, come before him. It's, it's really awful. He just, uh, he is entitled. He thinks he can get away with doing whatever he wants. and. Uh, it shouldn't happen on our town board. As far as the police chief um, assigning people to help put up their banners, it didn't happen last year. It was supposed to happen that way, and Carmine and I spoke with him. Actually, Carmine spoke with him. He said he was going to make a schedule a couple days before. He didn't have the people to fill it. I had to call the state police, who, of course, did what I asked to and protected the people that were putting up the banners. So it shouldn't, you shouldn't hear the excuse that there isn't somebody to schedule. If you're in charge and the town board, who is your boss, asks you to do something, you should make sure it's done. And if it's not done, you should get in the car and do it yourself. Yeah, I, go on. Uh, I was advised from the chief that uh, they are in better position this year than they were last year regarding manpower. So. Yeah, that's uh, I, I appreciate I appreciate that, but I can tell you uh, I'm retired from a different municipality from a town police department, and uh, every municipality does different things. We had a lot of carnivals that were on roads like 52. My lieutenants and my chiefs would put out cones and staple temporary no parking signs on the poles. So if a patrolman couldn't do it, a sergeant would do it, a lieutenant would do it, or the chief himself would do it. So that's the level of service that I like to see here in the town of Fishville. Next up is the resolution for the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Can I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 First resolution will be um, the Lanza. The first one up is a resolution to enter an agreement with uh, Lands Architectural Group PC, uh, whereas Lands Architectural Group has submitted a proposal for professional services as it pertains to architectural services, and whereas the Town Board of Town Officials is desirous of entering this agreement with uh, Lands Architects Group, uh, as the firm demonstrated the skills and uh, qualifications necessary for town projects, now that we resolved, the Town Board of Town Officials hereby authorizes Town Supervisors to enter an agreement for professional services with uh, Lanza Ar Architectural Group consistent with the scope of services set and fee set forth in the proposed attachment. Present that as a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I got it right here. I got it. Next. Yes. Thank you. I just couldn't hear it. Okay. Uh, next up is resolution and agreement with Mutz Mansion and Care of DC Animal Control Services. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, whereas the town of Fishkill has an existing agreement with the Mutz Mansion Inc. to maintain kennels and boarding dogs and other animals and compassionate animal rescue efforts in Dutchess County for the sole purpose of animal rescue and whereas the town of Fishkill desires to enter into agreement with Mutz Mansion Inc. and compassionate animal care of D.C. for their services, now therefore it be resolved that the town board of the town of Fishkill does hereby enter an agreement with Mutz Mansion Inc. and compassionate animal rescue efforts of Dutchess County is attached here too, and be it further resolved, the town supervisor is hereby authorized to execute and file the agreement pursuant with the town policy. And further resolved, this resolution shall be effective immediately. I present that as a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And three. Next up is resolution uh, to, 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 to authorize the police department to provide traffic safety coverage to install uh, hometown hero banners, resolution ID number. 9247, whereas the town of Fishkill participates in the Home Down Heroes program honoring local veterans, and whereas under the said program, banners are annually hung from the utility poles along public roadways, and whereas it is necessary to, and appropriate for the town to provide traffic safety for assistance for the activity of installing and taking down 
uh, said banners. Now, therefore, it resolved that the town fiscal police department is hereby requested and directed to coordinate with the sponsors of the hometown heroes program and appropriate the town highway department to provide traffic safety coverage for the installation or removal of the hometown banners along public roadways. I'll present that as a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Quick comment. Yes. So, um, like I said, uh, I have had conversations with the chief and the highway superintendent uh, regarding uh, this year's banners and uh, traffic control. So, listen, if you want to pass a resolution, I'll vote for it, but I don't find this to be a necessary res resolution. Uh, listen. Uh, want to do it? I'll vote for it. Uh, uh, what, what I'm going to do is when I want things to get... I, I don't want to do this going forward because it's a waste of time. It's not a waste of time when they don't do stuff. So if there's something that's important to me or the residents of Fishville, I'm going to do a resolution to make them do something where we, we don't get to the point where there's no manpower. This way it avoids any confusion. There's a direct order. A direct order to be complied by the orders of the town board. We keep it simple. Yep. Presented as a motion. Can I have a second? Second. second. All, John Foreman, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next up, uh, resolution authorized the town supervisor to begin a search for a full-time police chief with salary based on experience. ID number 9249, whereas the Town Board of Town Official is contemplating establishing a police department which includes full-time police officers, and whereas in regard to the same, the Town Board of Town Official is contemplating hiring a full-time chief, and whereas in order to explore the possibility of establishing a full-time police department with a full-time chief is necessary to appropriate to the town, supervisor begin a search for a full-time police officer with salary based on experience, and uh, to report to the Town Board the results of the search, now therefore be resolved. As follows, a town supervisor hereby authorized to, sign, to begin a search for a full-time police chief with salary based on experience, and two, that the conclusion of the search, the town supervisor shall report to the, the results to the town board. Any discussion? We've had the discussion. Real quick, you know, you have a hard time communicating with a part-time chief, and now you want authorization to hire a full-time chief. I, I don't get it. But. Council, Councilman Foreman doesn't understand what's going on. I do it. understand he, he, very well. He doesn't understand what the chain of command is. The chain of command is the citizens of Fishkill, yeah. the town board, and the police chief, and all the other department heads. That's how this stuff works. We have problems. We got a resignation of a, uh, another police officer, a patrolman. The patrol is the backbone of any law enforcement agency. We can't keep patrolmen. If I put an application out there for a chief of police, I'll get 100 applications. For lieutenant, 100 applications. Sergeant, 50. Detective, 50. Patrolman, not so much. We have to establish, and I'm not looking to do this overnight, I'm looking to hire one full-time cop a year for the next 10 years for 10, uh, 10 full-time cops. We can, we can do part-time detectives, we can do part-time sergeants, but in order to command the full-time police officers, you need to have a full-time police chief. I want to invest more in our community and improve our police department. And that's what I want to start today is by getting a vote to allow me to find a, a chief so we can start hiring full-time guys. So I'll present that as a motion and have a second. Second. Roll call vote. Okay. Okay. Um, Supervisor Albert? No, he voted last. Oh, that's right. I, I apologize. I've done all the reasons for it. That's okay. I do apologize. Okay, Council Member Ryan. We have a great chief. You never call him. There, I go to see him. We have conversations. Uh, there, there's a, a churn in every police department. Um, and to imply that we have major, major issues is a disservice to this apartment and to the citizens of this town. And um, we're both on board with absolutely wanting the best for this town, and especially safety, especially these days. Uh, there's no doubt about that, but uh, you're going about it the wrong way, and I vote no. No. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting hearing some of the comments that have been made by individuals on this board. Um, it is also worth noting that those individuals are politically affiliated with the current employees of our police department. They sought and received their political endorsement. From the police chief? I'm not referring to the police chief, I'm referring to... Oh, we're talking about this resolution, it's the police chief. Go on, keep on. Right? 
there is an expectation of talking the talk and walking the walk. I've never sought the endorsement of a first responder. I've never sought the endorsement of uh, emergency services. I've never sought the endorsement of a law enforcement officer. It's never my intention to do so. I, I don't care about the optics of it. I care about delivering a result. When the people of the town of Fishkill elected me to represent them here, they didn't elect me to show personal loyalty to individuals, regardless of their job performance. And I will restate what I stated at our previous meeting, because we didn't have a chance to discuss it tonight. Moving forward with the idea of hiring a full-time police chief is not a mark against our current police chief. It is a mark of the progress that our department has made over 50 years of its existence. Just as every type of technology inevitably renders itself obsolete, every type of, of service that expands and grows requires evolution and improvement. There is only so much that a part-time police department staffed entirely by part-time people, from command staff all the way down to the patrol officers who, as the supervisor rightly pointed out, are the backbone of a police department. There's only so much that a part-time police department can do until it needs to, because of the restrictions upon working hours, grow so large that it no longer becomes financially sensible, <coughs> no longer becomes financially responsible. Taking steps to gradually transition from an excellent part-time police department to an excellent full-time police department is what is responsible. I vote yay. I think it's a simple yes vote for me because uh, we need to improve the town official police department. And uh, you've got two board members here that are willing to invest in the police department even more. Uh, I do the budget every year and I see the same thing over and over again. I see police officers coming and going left and right and uh, they're not staying. So what happens is the guys with rank are working more tours, making more money. Uh, and just think about this, for the last five years, we have not hired one local person in the Fisco Police Department, not one person. Our whole command staff, all four of them are all outsiders. We have to, we have to build that community trust with the, with the citizens and the patrol cars. And I like the coffee with donuts and I like all that good stuff. That's all good stuff. But a patrolman on the street, watching you walk your dog, seeing you're cutting your grass, talking to you, that's gonna be here 10, 15, 20 years is going to have a relationship that it can build upon, whereas you get two type of cops here. You get a cop that retires after 20 years on a full-time job, comes here, does his thing, and then you got a young guy that retires, that, um, that go self-academy himself, comes here for a year or two, and he leaves. So that information just doesn't come in. So I, I think this was a reasonable request. I wanted, I, I want, I've already spent probably increased police spending by 25% in the last four years. Your public safety, I added a third shift from the 12 to 12 shift to protect, to protect our citizens. And I want to invest more, but I can't invest more on a product that's not going to go anywhere. We're going to have the same things. We had a resignation tonight. This gentleman was an awesome cop. He left. He's gone. He doesn't want to do anything to this anymore. And everybody's talking about how great it is. When a police officer retires from a 20-year job and he wants to work a part-time job, he goes and does his background on what's going on here. You know one of the first things he sees? He sees that Scott Beer's case. Police officer decertified without his due process. Why would a police officer want to come here and work in an atmosphere like this? And there's a whole host of other things. Uh, but uh, head, it's, it, 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 listen, really? it's a, li, hold on, hold on. It is a police department, and I can say it, it does not back the blue. That's a fact. So we got, we got problems. We need to start hiring full-time guys. And hopefully when we get the third person on the board, we're, I don't care what political party they are, I hope they vote in January 1st, because it's going to be a lot of this stuff is coming back on the agenda January 1st. That's been a 2-2 vote. And I hope whoever's sitting in that seat is going to vote for a full-time police chief. So I am, I'm disappointed that, um, that this, this resolution failed, <coughs> and this hurts the, the residents of the town of Fishville. Sure does. No, well, why, why did you hire the chief if you're, if you're out there saying, oh, he's an outsider? You hired him. We didn't hire him. Yeah. You did. I, 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 you I, have I'm, a personal vendetta against the police chief. What, what vendetta? <laughs> he has no more of a vendetta against the police chief than you have an interest in kissing up to the department, so they keep endorsing you whenever you want. No, it's difficult to take you seriously that, on that, the police department, Brian. You've connected yourself with them politically. Pretty cheap 
uh, on your part to say that for somebody, I didn't seek anybody's endorsement. It came my way, and it was because of the actions of, of everybody else that was on this board. So, excuse well, me. You're, you're, and this is a free will. Are you telling me that you were endorsed the without free will, seeking the endorsement? This is the free will of the PBA that made that decision. Okay? They can't be maneuvered. Are you kidding me? Oh, well, I would like to say, for the record, the PBA is entirely entitled to endorse whoever they wish. I am not criticizing, condemning, or any action that the PBA has taken. They are free to associate themselves politically with whomever they choose. I do not. I do not condemn that. We'll have more. We'll have more opportunity to discuss this. And and just remember sure. that and that, in, that endorsement was not with the majority of vote of those police officers. You did not get fifty plus one. It was like maybe forty percent of the police vote because the cops didn't want to play politics with this. And the only reason you guys got the endorsement, who's who is related to the PBA president on your committee? Would you like to disclose that to the citizens of the town of Fishkill? He's not on the committee anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> he was. He was his son. There you go. Thank you for answering the question. No, the absolutely. We've got no problem with it. That's an endorsement right there. The son wanted to work, so that's fine. But he's going on to his life in college and moving on with his life. So Thank there's nothing hidden here. And you know, no. and you, you parse the, the vote. That's interesting how you know the vote. I didn't know the vote. All I knew is we got this endorsement. And it's, it's behind us now. We have this in front of us, and there'll be more discussion in the future. I know. Yeah, when we both want the best for the town and the best police department. Um, I think that we're just going to have more discussion. And you, can't make, you, can, you, you cannot make a part-time police department the equivalent to a full-time police department. Well, it's just see, not going to happen. See, right? and, and it's difficult to take your opinions and your views seriously as being fair and, and unbiased when you have sought and, and ran, frankly, on a campaign of being endorsed by our police department. I did. So you betcha. it's difficult to expect you to, That's, in an unbiased and, and open-minded manner, examine a, the police department it's, it's and a, identify areas to improve it. Because it, the police good, department, exactly as it exists now, it, serves it, your political purposes. It's, it's, a good, right. it's a good argument, very artful, totally incorrect. I, I, listen, it, it's a police department that decertified a, a police officer for his First Amendment rights, okay? And, and the internal problems with our- He resigned. With a, resi a, re a retirement doesn't mean you can decertify. So this is what happened. See, but here's, here's the thing. You mentioned there, something, there and you are, cut me off, you don't give me issues, a chance to respond. No one is against Scott Barrett. There are issues. He's suing to get research. You wanted to take a vote on something. He's suing to do that right now. Why are two mutually uh, <laughs> exclusive? Oh, they, they got nothing to do with it. It totally you, makes you, no you've sense. Got, the dynamics of a part-time police department, there's really no civil service. Uh, the, only, the only person that's really a civil service officer is the patrolman and the detective. There's no test to be a, a sergeant. There's no test to be a lieutenant. So the, the, it, there's even more with command staff type of stuff that we can go into. But, but the, basic, the basic, you're not going to do anything about that stuff. So the only way to do this, no, only we could, there's only way be a we, discussion here about that. Only way we can start hiring full-time guys one a year for 10 years i think that's reasonable is to have a commander that can command full-time cops that's that that's my goal i want to improve the police department i want to go to the citizens of fishville and say listen i want to i want to, uh, some more appropriation to do this stuff to make it better and what you got here is you're at a fork in the road we're going to continue what we're doing or we're going to do something better yeah. this, this, this way, is the bottom line there, didn't councilman foreman indicate that I, I the chief has the ability to request a waiver from the state so that he could be our full-time police chief did, didn't, did you not indicate that at our last meeting? Councilman Foreman mentioned that. Councilman Foreman, yeah. you, you indicated that. Yeah. So even if the possibility exists that the chief could transition from a part-time chief to a full-time chief, you're still against a full-time chief. And it's, uh, I, uh, I, it just, I, I well, still will, I can't wrap my head. Here, here, or, here, given here, all of the political I know, I, know, and I, know. I am still speaking. I know. Well, we're having a conversation. Well, conversations involve one person speaking, stopping, and then another person starting. Well, Does not, not unless we're you just deciding when other people are done. Not unless we're arguing. Finish up, Greg, and we'll move on. No, thought completely left my head. I'm going to need a second. It's all about the part time. So one of the great one of the great strengths oh. of our <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> I thought you said you paused. Go right ahead, Greg. It's, it, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me, given all of the posturing, all of the 
campaigning, all of the everything. I mean, I was there a couple years ago when your people were putting out signs that Ozzy was defunding the police department. Here he is for like the third time in the last two years trying to spend more money on the police department and you're shooting it down because you like it just the way it is. No, it's not true. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, next up, for item, we have a special uh, item for special consideration. Mr. Gabba, say the whole thing and I'll make a, I'll make a motion. I'd suggest that's the way to go. Yep. Motion to authorize the town supervisor to contact the New York State Department of Transportation and request that the improvements being made by Healy Brothers to Route 52 include sidewalks and take into consideration the concerns of the safety concerns of town residents. I'll present that as a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. New and old business. Brian? Oh, goodness. I'm going to enjoy speaking with this new person about the update of our website, which I've been pushing for, and I'm glad to see that happening. Um, I'll be, I will be doing some more research on EMS. I know that we're going to have more and more of an expense problem going into the future. Um, I, I wish, uh, and this is no criticism of the gentleman that came and talked about fire districts tonight, because we, we did go and meet with them. We did. No one has done that before, put together uh, some hearings with the fire districts because of all the issues, primarily do, to do with we have volunteer fire districts. You've had generational families and everyone else uh, participating and, and volunteering, and it seems to be just um, uh, dwindling. It's statewide. It is countrywide. It's everywhere. So the idea was to generate some ideas. We had people come and we talked. Um, yes, and I will confess, I forgot about the district map out here, and we'll put that up there. I, I have a folder of notes. I thought I went through everything, and I missed that, so I confess that. Um, but we do have a meeting coming up, and, and it is with the fire districts, and it's ongoing. Um, we, we did something very simple. We allowed them to put notices on the electronic sign out in front of the rec, so when they are recruiting, uh, and they know that they have, yes, we go to the dentist because we just, we show support. So we're, we're, you know, they are their own individual bodies. You know, we don't control them. Uh, they tax, they have their own structure. Um, you know, all we can do is just see what, what we can do to try to partner. And um, I will tell you, it's, it's very, very difficult. Um, and I would hate for us to go to a full-time paid fire district because that's going to be royally expensive but that's a fear in the future and we have to be prepared for it that having been said I had notes and I am terribly sorry um, I, I'll just let it go at that no. um, I do just want to uh, mention a couple of things um, one thing that has been on my mind quite a bit uh, but tonight's discussion um, with the residents of, of Fishkill Woods and Fox Ridge um, have brought it back to the front of mind. Uh, our building department has an awful lot to do and not an awful lot of people working in it. So I would like there to be a discussion uh, and perhaps we should invite the building inspector to come to our next town board meeting uh, to discuss the possibility of expanding the size of the building department staff. Um, Joel in particular has far too much to do he is both the lead building inspector and the zoning administrator. I think it would be worthwhile to discuss separating those to reduce the burden. Um, because as, as we can objectively acknowledge, things have been missed. Um, there, are, there are requests from residents for action to be taken uh, and, and the manpower isn't necessarily there. And you know, just as when the chief has indicated that we needed the higher additional officers of the police department, we did so. I think we need to recognize the need for potentially more staff in the building department and we should talk with the building inspector and find out what that might look like, whether that would be bring on another full-time employee, bring on another <coughs> part-time employee, perhaps we could talk with neighboring municipalities about a shared service. I just think that it, it would be appropriate for us to take this as seriously as the residents are asking us to. Uh, how about we do ask them to come in and do a presentation and we can ask them questions during a presentation? I mean, I agree with that. What do you think? They're, they're, you know, I, I don't want to sound in any way critical of our staff because we, we, we need them, we like them. They're, you know, they're, they're, 
there is um, something that needs to have you know a yeah. conversation about, and um, I I would agree. So there's just there's too much work for too few people. That's all. This this isn't to a mark against anyone's professionalism or work ethic. It's just you know we we've had three people ish in our building department for quite a long time, and you know the town is a lot larger than it was when that building department size was the case. In fact, if I understand correctly, it, it, the building department is downsized in the past 30 years while the population of the town has doubled. Um, so you're okay with a presentation or you want a discussion? I think a presentation is fine as long as, you know, when that presentation comes to an end, it gives us, you know, I don't want to say a Q&A period, but it gives us a chance to have a dialogue of at course. least. I, I can tell you that uh, the supervisor and I met with Joel maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about that very, very topic because we do think uh, there's a lot going on in that department, and uh, it just, we didn't see anything go through, and I think you took the, the part-time position out of the budget. I took a lot of part-time positions out, yes. But we always put it back in. We can always put that back in. Yep. yep. The residents have, have come, this is not the first time that, that Bridget and the, uh, and the Fishkill Woods people have come. Um, you know, there are issues that they're dealing with that, that date back a number of years. There are issues that they're dealing with that are very current. Um, Regardless, you know, the, the town has an obligation to maintain staffing levels that meet the needs of the residents. And, you know, I, I think we can agree that we're at an inflection point where there, yeah. there needs to be something sure. that yeah. enhances the building department. Again, this is not a, a mark against them. This is simply recognizing that they need more hands on deck. So, uh, uh, Joe, uh, uh, talk to uh, Joel tomorrow. See, uh, I'd like to have him in here by the second meeting of April. Or April, we got, we got March, April. Yeah, second meeting of April if he's available, or before that, somewhere in that time period. Six weeks. The project that's so screwed up is across the street. You can see it from his Okay. Uh, the next town board meeting is going to be the 20th, right? March 20th? That's right. We are going to go into executive session uh, to discuss an employee. Um, I'll make a motion to leave the regular course of business and go into executive session. Can Sorry. I have a motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Just brief recess.